We will pick our teams for the game. Alison Becker will be in goal. Gorsi, I'll come to you first for the defence. I'll let you go through yours, but for me, it's it's fairly obvious this one. Obviously, Robertson still out. There's not loads of, of decisions elsewhere to be made. Maybe at centre back, but which four are you going to go for? Yeah, I, I, I don't think there, there are there are many choices to be honest. Um, obviously, Trent's coming back in. Um, Costa Simakas in for Robertson, and then. Matip and, and Van Dijk. Um, obviously, Canate is back in training, and that is great news. But he hasn't played competitively since the end of May. Um, and there's even an argument to be made for Matip when you know both players are, are kind of in form. Um, I probably would side in the Matip camp over Canate anyway. Um, just I don't know if there's particularly anything wrong with Canate anyway, but um, just a massive fan of Matip. So um, yeah, that's uh, that's my back five. Yep, same for me. Theo, any difference or are you the same? No, it's the same. Um, I think last time Trent was dropped by England, he bounced back with a brilliant display away at Arsenal in a 3 0 win, got an assist. Next league game after that, he got uh, a last minute winner against Villa. So hopefully, a repeat of that against Brighton, a few assist goals will be a perfect statement to send out to Southgate. It's got to be a Simic asset left back, and then probably do lean with Matip. Don't want to risk Canate. Klopp says they'll see how he is in training, but there's so many games coming up. You, you don't want to put him in too early when you've got the options there, so you don't have to. Uh, they're in a, this positive situation with Matip and Gomez that they didn't play for the countries over the international break, so they'll be well rested. And I think Matip, he is ahead of Gomez in the pecking order, so he's the obvious choice. There is going to be rotation at some point, Tom, at, at centre-back. And obviously, Joe Gomez didn't have the, the greatest game in his last appearance, but has had a, a good season up to this point. Is there is there any argument for, for him, do you think? Not maybe necessarily with Brighton specifically in mind, but possibly with the, the future matches as well to come. Yeah, I, th- I think um, you know, Gomez has usually been quite a reliable player for Liverpool. So I think his issue a lot of the time is been more down to injuries rather than you know his actual form. Because you know that season where Liverpool won the league, you know he was excellent alongside Van Dijk that season, and and like I said, whenever he has played, most of the time he you know he's done done very well. Just unfortunate that performance against Napoli happened at a time when you know Matic was also available for section, so he's now come back in and you know got his place back as it were. Um, yeah, I think we'll still see plenty of him this season because just because of the amount of games there are really. You know, he's a player that Klopp can count on, same with Canate. So, you know, he's got plenty of options now in that area, but that's that's no bad thing for uh, Klopp. It may just be a case of, you know, Gomez is more likely to start, I guess, the cup matches, FA Cup, Carroll Cup games. Um, Klopp's probably, you know, he's more likely to stick with Matip and Van Dijk for most of the league matches, you would have thought, unless there is like a, you know, a midweek game followed by... Sorry, a Saturday game followed by a midweek game. So uh, every week for the rest of the Yeah, week. <laughs> there's going to be a lot of that, exactly. So he will get his chances over the season, I would have thought, yeah. Yeah, definitely. A few options in midfield as well, Gorsty. We'll move on to, to that next. I think there's probably Thiago and, and Fabinho nailed on. The third one, though. Uh, yeah, I'm going to bring Henderson back in because I just think that is probably still Liverpool's first choice midfield when everyone's fit and ready and... Um, I think we've made the case a few times now about Harvey Elliott has, has done well at times in possession, but I think Liverpool lack a certain physicality when he, he's in the middle of the pitch. And they're not quite at the level at the moment where they can afford to just drop Elliott in and just say, go and do your stuff and, and the, the rest of the team will be able to cover for whatever kind of deficiencies he has. I think Liverpool need everyone kind of um, you know ready to stand up and be counted just at this period. And, and I think Henderson, you know what you're going to get with them, don't you? Yeah, I'm in agreement. Actually, I think there's there is an argument for Harvey Elliott, but maybe maybe save him for for midweek. Theo, are, are you the same? Thiago, Fabinho, and and one more, and if so, who's the one? Yeah, I think so. Um, with Henderson, it's a tricky one because I don't think we expected him to be called up by England, even though he was ahead of schedule and obviously he's trained and seems to have not suffered any setbacks. He only had a stoppage time appearance in one of the two games. It's like, how ready is he really? How happy were Liverpool that England called him up for two, not meaningless Nations League games, but by the time that second one came around that he played and it was a dead rubber. So it's like, was it a needless risk or was it just they happened to be there at the right time for him to get those minutes? And if there hadn't been an international break, 
He'd have made that substitute appearance to Liverpool. So if he's ready, I think it's time to put the captain back in, just give him that little bit of leadership uh, starting this one. Uh, Elliot, he's had an up and down start to the season. He looks so good offensively, but there's been a few critics, I suppose, for his defensive contributions. You could always stake a claim for Artemelo as well. So maybe this is time for him to get his first start. So I'd like to see him get more minutes off the bench. But we'll, we'll go for the, uh, the three experienced ones who started the season as first choice. And then as the games come on, that's when you rotate. That's when we'll have to see the other ones. But when it's the first game of this run, you can go with your strongest. Same for you, Tom, or are you mixing it up? Yeah, I think I'll stick with uh, the three the guys have said. I think, like, as they've mentioned already, it's probably the safest option in this sort of game. Yep, definitely. Let's move on to the uh, forward line then, Gorst. Yeah, a couple of decisions to, to make in, in this area. Which way yeah. are you going to go? Um, yeah, I think it's just a, a bit of a toss-up between Jota and Nunes, isn't it? Um, tough on this. I'm tempted to kind of play it safe and, and go Jota because you'd know what he going to get with them. And I thought he was he was good against Ajax in a kind of work hard in way um, never really gave Ajax a minute without the quality that we know he's got just because it's been so long since he played properly and he was in the, uh, a good bit of rhythm as, as Klopp likes to say um, but then I just think that coming off that goal for Uruguay Nunes could really just do with just something going for him couldn't he and, and it could be the, the thing that kind of takes him into flight if he has a good game tomorrow so um, I'm going to go Nunes down in the middle and obviously Salah and, and Diaz you know, on, on the flanks. I'm going to go with Jota and Nunes, I think. I think Luis Diaz only came back early yesterday, so possibly there's an argument to, to save him for, for midweek, but it is a tricky one. Theo, which three are you going with? Uh, I'm going along with your reasoning. Um, if you look at the, the forwards over the international break, Diaz was playing, I think, early hours Wednesday morning, wasn't he? He only got back yesterday. He hasn't trained yet. He's probably in training right now as we speak. So it's the first time that we've had a chance to look at him. Whereas I know um, Jota and Nunes missed training yesterday, but I think that was more of a precaution. Jota had said he'd been a bit tired, but they'd already played the day before, come back. Um, part of me is tempted to go with Firmino because he didn't actually play for Brazil and their games were only in France. Nunes, I think, was in Bratislava. Jota would have been in Portugal, so at least geographically, Diaz is the one who's going to be knackered out of all this travelling in international football. Um, but you want to see Nunes and Jota keep some rhythm. Like They've got goals in this international break. See if they can take that form into Liverpool. So Jota on the left, Nunes down the middle, and Salah on the right. But I wouldn't be against Mino down the middle if Klopp did want to go for the fresher legs and they're feeling worse for wear after the internationals and Jota is still complaining about fatigue, for example. Tom, which way are you going? I think I'm going to go with uh, Theo's three and uh, dropping Diaz out of the team. Just as you said, it's maybe it's going to be a bit of a tight turnaround for him. So, yeah, I think Jota is obviously more than capable of, of performing in his absence. So Jota, uh, Nunez and Salah as the three. Yeah, certainly in agreement with that. Well, we'll see who's closest to being correct in terms of our teams tomorrow when team news comes out. We'll see how close we are in terms of match predictions at the end of the game as well, Gorsty. I'm going to go for 3-1 to Liverpool. What do you reckon it might be? Yeah, I was thinking about when, when Brighton went to Old Trafford and played United off the park, then they did really show no fear, just kind of played the the team rather than the, the, the stadium and all that. Um, but I just think this... Coming, you know, the, the break that Liverpool have had might have just had a chance to kind of clear the decks, recharge the batteries, and all that. And I think we might just see something a little bit akin to, you know, what we've been used to. So I think Liverpool might just win it uh, 2 0. Good stuff, Theo. Liverpool win. Liverpool win, but no clean sheet. I'll go uh, 2 1. Uh, they've not been too convincing yet. They're a bit better against Ajax. Uh, I suppose it's because we've had the break here. Yeah, they needed that rhythm. It's going to be a bit of a rusty start, but maybe they'll get over the line for it. Yeah, it could be, could be fairly close. Tom, how do you reckon it might play out? Um, I might slightly contradict something I said earlier about not being too much in it. I think Liverpool will, you know, put in a bit of a performance. So I might go for three 0 I think it'd be important to get a clean sheet just after sort of you know a few tough weeks at the back. Um, and I think, you know, I think going forward, there'll be 
threat for Brighton. So 3 0 was going to be my prediction. Excellent stuff. Wins all round from all of us then. We'll see how it plays out on Saturday afternoon. Of course, all the usual coverage from the echo, liverpool.com and Blood Red in all of the usual places. Until next time, though, from all of us here, it's goodbye for now. <laughs>